As the brass band comes out, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready for the big one, the J.A. Russell Marley Springs Royal 50 lap sprint car race tonight at Western Springs Speedway. Let's welcome the cars out onto the track. Jonathan Allard coming out there. He's uh, got to be the favourite for this one, of course. Michael Pickens, uh, an issue with the uh, the midget, crashing the midget and uh, not quite getting it. Um, and Jonathan, Paul Sitter, um, oh, strategy. Yeah, we just got to be there at the end and make smart laps. Uh, just got to be a good race car driver. Good luck, Jonathan. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Allard, car number four. All the way from Christchurch, Steve Duff. Steve, good effort up there near the front. Yeah, it's great to be here in front of this awesome crowd. Just like to thank the sponsors, Elliot, uh, Procreed, uh, Concut, and uh, the boys with the Carol Knight. Okay, good luck. Steve Duff, car number 19 from Christchurch. Dean Cooper, Dean, give us a strategy from where you're starting. Oh, to be fair, I'm just going to do the first 25 and, and see where we end up. And, and after that, hopefully we can do something at the front. Okay, good luck, Dean. Thank you. Number two, car number two, Hydro Extreme. As the cars make their way around the track, ladies and gentlemen, Graham's picking out drivers that uh, are willing to have, have a chat. As like it was said, it's a 225 lap races. Uh, so how the first one shakes down and how you start the second one. And of course, the other thing is when we do the pit stops in the middle with the uh, the tire changes, the fuel that gets to go in the car, then the whole field starts concertina up again. So if uh, someone had got a big break, say from first to second, that all disappears for the second 25 laps and of course you've got to be ready for the change in the track that's coming out there as the cars make their way onto the field bringing out the wreckers uh, it's going to be a tightly packed field ladies and gentlemen as the cars will make their way around with the brass band in front of them checking out the tackiness of the track seeing how their boots might just sort of stick into the uh, the clay a little bit there boy. and uh, as Graham got uh, someone else he can uh, have a quick chat to so no we're not getting we're getting back to uh, everyone's feeling quite tight-lipped on strategies for the race i think dean cooper said it best run through the 25 laps see where you are and see you work well, how you're going to work out the strategy for the second 25 laps when they get out there on the field of course everything will be prepped for the cars to uh do the changes they need to do and uh graham on the uh the track right now you have a quick update yeah, guys, just how it follows here. This is, um, like we've said, two 25-lap races, et cetera, et cetera. So what happens on the 25th lap, the cars will be on a yellow light. And on the yellow light, they'll circulate, and then the lapped cars will go to the rear of the field. So the cars will all end up in the order of which they are in the race. So like I said, lapped cars at that stage will go to the rear of the field. Then they'll bring them onto the, um, onto the grass section from, from there right around to here and then the, the guys are allowed to come out from the pits with all the crew chiefs and all the mules and things like that with all tires fuel all that sort of stuff then there'll be a sound of of, of a hooter the hooter then signals that the five minute time has started so the drivers have to get out of their cars and before they put any fuel in they're allowed to change tires make adjustments to the cars change things around but they can do anything. There'll be a second hooter after four minutes at that stage. Um, that's just a warning that it's time to get back in the cars. The drivers at that point should be back in their cars. If the guys are still working on the cars when a double hooter sounds, which is in the fifth minute, 
what happens at that point is that the guy that's working on the car, they have to go to the rear of the field if they're still working on the car. But in the interest of safety, if the driver's not quite completely in his car at the conclusion of the fifth minute, they are allowed one driver assistant to help him do up the seat belts and make sure that they are safe. So I'll just quickly go over that again. We've got two hooters go off, they've got five minutes to do whatever they want to the car, but the driver has to be out of the car before they refuel the cars. Then when this another hooter goes, that's after four minutes, that's an indicator that it's nearly time. Five minutes is quite a long time to work on them. At the conclusion of the two hooters in five minutes, no more working on the cars, and um, they line up exactly as they finish the first 25 laps, one to 20. That's how I understand it. I went to the driver's briefing and there was no complication with that. Al, what, what, what do you think of the whole thing? Mate, I'm extremely excited. I'm all for change, um, and certainly when it's in the, the best interest of the fans uh, here for what is one of the best shows in the city, I think it's fair to say. And just to quickly change the topic of discussion there, Graham Standring, for the people that are actually in the stands doing the head count of the cars that are out there on racetrack and looking for their favourite driver, you might actually have noticed that there is no 54A of Michael Pickens out on the track, ladies and gentlemen. After that incident in the Midget Car feature for the Midget Car Grand Prix, Michael has decided to check himself into the St. John's to uh, get him to take a look at his leg, um, and he's just not confident to get behind the wheel of the race car when he's uh, a little bit vulnerable in that sense. So off the front row will be the man out of Chico, California, Jonathan Allard, all on his own. So because it's single file on the start, so the car that will be gridded up directly behind the 4 USA will be the 98M of Ryan O'Connor. So rather than being two abreast, they'll be single file on both the first 25 and second 25 lap features. So huge things going on here tonight in all events. So we'll see the man, Jonathan Allard, He's on great form here tonight at the Springs. He'll be setting the pace for this one. Two 25-lap feature races. Talking to a lot of the drivers up and down the pits uh, at the start of the evening, Nick, I'm sure you can agree with me. It's almost just a, a, a game of survival to get through the first 25 laps, and then the second 25 is when it all starts. Absolutely. There's a, something I've been thinking, and I'll ask you, Alistair, how much fuel uh, do you put in at that, that, 25, uh, that 25 lap thing? Do you fill the tank up and then try and use as much horsepower as you've got to power through the field? Or do you say, if I only go to a certain level, it keeps the car lighter and more nimble through the field as I've got to pick my way through the traffic? What sort of decision do you think that will play into <laughs> as the, the race goes on? Uh, Nick, I'll tell you if something, if something a little bit different. I'm used to uh, data acquisition and uh, when doing the New Zealand Grand Prix and Toyota Racing Series that you've actually got those fuel calculations from a fuel burn rate, whereas with the uh, midgets and sprint cars, you have a wooden stick that you stick inside the fuel bladder, and uh, you see how much fuel you've used and work out what your burn rate is off what, uh, what's measuring on that dipstick. So um, I spoke to a few few um, crew chiefs and whatnot before, and they seemed to think you'd actually managed to get through the whole 50 around the bull ring here with a full tank. So I think there's a little bit of strategy. There might be some guys that just want to play it safe and just brim it every time to get through both 25 lap uh, features. Um, a bit of strategy, as you say, because the handling characteristics of the car, when you brim them for, say, a 50 lap race, um, you know, speaking from experience, when, when you do a 50 lap midget car feature, the car, dare I say it, is a bit of a dog at the start of the race with a fuel fuel tank and uh, a car that's set up to essentially come on as the race comes so, uh, as it progresses. So I think there's two two ways of looking at it that you can actually play this out, as you say. We'll see who moves quickly through the field of this one, meaning they might have a light tank to start off with to get a good position, and then they might just load it up a bit. Or, you know, work on the principle if we do a half a tank here and a half a tank in the second race, it'll keep the car nicely balanced. Yeah, and I think there's also a little bit of the uh, just the, the aspect of team personnel. If you haven't got enough guys in your team to actually be able to change two tyres 
refuel, uh, jacks, uh, hammers, and uh, whatever it may be. It may just be a shortage of people. So you might go, okay, we're just going to brim it from the get-go and, and run that out and then just focus on tyres and maybe a shock change um, or something like that. So it just eliminates one uh, variable in the situation and potentially a, a complication. You know, the last thing you'd want is to change a change a wheel and uh, manage to cross thread a, a wheel nut or something along those lines. <laughs> Mate, here we are making it all up because we have never done this before at Lucas Oil West and Spring Speedway. So let's get ready for some great action. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the J.A. Russell Marley Royal 50 Lapper for sprint cars at Western Spring Speedway for our final light. Give a huge round of applause as the cars make their way around the track, then settle back for 50 laps of hot rockin' 900 horsepower action. Thanks very much, Nick. And we're going to take a quick look through the grids as they stand. It's going to be the 4 USA of Jonathan Allard off the front at the pointy end. Scrap the 54A of Michael Pickens, who is set to be starting out of group position number two. Then we go back to the 98A of Ryan O'Connor out of two. Then it's going to be Jamie Duff out of three. Then starting behind him is going to be Dean Cooper and Max Guilford in the next machine. So lights are out as we get set. There's almost half a lap of cars on the racetrack set to go green as the Daltons for USA leads them off for the first 25. Allard heads across the chalk for the first time and he's going to lead them. He gets off to a great start initially from Ryan O'Connor and Jamie Duff. Dean Cooper right in the back as Ermo just jumps into the rut coming out of turn number two. So the HLR Auto Super Shops driver trying to go high side, working his way around Max Gilford. And just to say that, he has a half spin. And Christian Hermanson manages to get it recollected, but he's virtually going to be last by the time he gets back on track. And just like that, Jonathan Allard is probably only a lap or two away from finding himself into the lap traffic in the mix of uh, Battersby and Benton as well. So not long until Jonathan Allard is going to have his hands full with this one. There's cars virtually spread from one end of the track to the next. So it's Allard from Ryan O'Connor, Duff and Cooper. So Allard on an absolute mission. He's not holding back. He's not saving anything up. He wants to take the first 25 and the second 25. And as we say, is the strategy going to pay out? Where are you just going to survive the first 25? And then it's all on in the second. Well, we're about to find out because Allard has already rounded up the first of the lap cars of Bannersby. So there is guys. Big wheel stand for Chris Kernahan coming out of turn number two. Jonathan Allard working that high side, trying to work right around the upper ring, around the less experienced drivers that have qualified for the King Royale. J.A. Russell, Marley sponsored event here. Allard is going to have to be careful navigating his way through, being a little bit conservative with these back markers. As he navigates, trying to get around Steve Smith, next will be Christian Hermanson. As he gets around the outside of the Henderson Valley, machine just clears it so we've got the yellow out we've got one up and over make that two over and it's going to be the two nz of dean cooper and jamie duff down there so big contact and that's going to see both those race cars out of this one and not able to take the green in the restart so early carnage not even 10 laps completed out of our first 25 and that takes two of the heavy hitters out of this one so Jamie Duff having started out of group position number four and the two NZ having started out of five and uh, both well certainly Dean Cooper up and over and Jamie Duff they may be able to get that car restarted and uh, repaired in that in that uh, compulsory caution and, and reset you could say at the halfway point so I tell you who that does essentially help and give a little bit of a reprieve and relief to is that of Jonathan Allard but all that hard work that he had done to try and break away from the attack of Ryan O'Connor has all gone to waste and I tell you a driver that's lurking right on the back in third place on the back of Ryan O'Connor is that of Max Guilford so in that borrowed race car borrowed engine car that's been campaigned this season by Nico Pinkinen, 
who's unfortunately not with us once again here to compete for the J.A. Russell and Marley Springs Royale. So in that borrowed race car, Guilford doing a great job. Now finds himself up to third with this incident prevailing. And then look at this, the driver who had to go through the B dash and now finds himself up into the fourth spot of Dean Brindle as well. So it's funny how things play out, as is James McDonald right in the thick of this one now as well, behind Darn. Two litres a lap on fuel when they go around here, so that's 400 metres, two litres of fuel. The tanks hold, I'm not sure exactly how much they hold, but they hold a lot. But when the cars are going around on a yellow light like this, they use almost two litres a lap too, because the engine is going um, at the same, not the same RPM, but the distance or the time that the engine's going is much longer. So it goes like 45 seconds to roll around a lap like this. And so the engine uses just as much fuel to do a lap here as it does under race conditions. So um, fuel may be an issue, although we're used to these 25 lappers like this and, and um, we'll see how that goes. But certainly that seems to be the talking point at the moment. And just while you're down there, we're still under yellow, Graham. You've got uh, obviously Jamie Duff down there, given we didn't get a replay of that one. Are you able to get any word with Jamie there yeah. before we take the green here? Yeah, I am with Jamie. Jamie, um, we didn't quite get a replay of it. We were watching different parts of the track. Just tell us what happened. Uh, just just took the rut, unfortunately. Um, put the car sideways. I feel real, uh, real bad for the other guys involved. You know, they were innocent party, but uh, that's, that's just what we do, right? Yeah, you'd certainly um, got a lot further than you had done the last meeting that you're at, which was the New Zealand Championship. You certainly looked up to speed this time, so you must have been pretty encouraged by the way the car was going. Yeah, the guys are putting a good car under me week in, week out. We just need a little bit of luck to change and we might get some results. Okay, lights out. Thanks very much there, Graham. So line of turn once again. The Daltons for USA is your pace setter and will lead us down to take the green once again. And he gets the jump. Watch out for the charging Max Guilford running in that third spot, trying to get through on Ryan O'Connor. But here's the attack from the Darn Brothers out of Tokoro and the Hydrolink and Valvoline Machines. Currently running in the fifth and sixth spot. As you say that, James Darn goes high side, trying to get him around the outside of Brindle. He's going to make it work for it, trying to charge around high side. But Jonathan Allard once again streaks ahead. As James Darm gets up the inside, goes three wide with his brother, two for the price of one. As Keaton tries to get in there as well, but Dean Brindle says no sir, and cuts the nose off the inside of the valve lane, number 88. So Brindle now trying to sneak up the inside with the slider, hits the cushion and watch out. Here comes James Darm, Mr. Angry. He's called that for a reason, he got the slingshot and took advantage of Brindle getting caught up on the run. And just like that with a couple of laps run, already Jonathan Allard is only a couple of turns away from being on the back of Battersby once again. So here we go, with now in double digits, 10 laps run, 15 left to go. The Daltons for USA. The business and the job of it commences now in the thick of battle. Allard now gets around the Scott Electrical, number 25. As we say that, he checks up and almost ends up right against the wall down and turns number three and four. But it's Allard from O'Connor, then it's Guilford, then it's Brindle, and then the two Darn brothers in the thick of it. This man on screen, he spoke about it in his earlier interview with Graham Standrick, talking about how he's used to navigating his way around rough racetracks in the United States and certainly testing conditions here at Luxor Western Springs Speedway for the J.A. Russell Marley Springs Royale. Now Allard right on the back of Steve Smith trying to get up the inside. He's got to be careful with some of these less experienced drivers. Gets through on Steve Smith. Now sets his eyes onto the back of the Tree King number 16, O'Brien Barry. Trying to keep his nose clean. Making sure he gets through for the 25 laps to be able to commence the second 25 to get through to the paying spot. Certainly the track starting to take some rubber down in turns three and four as Ryan O'Connor ends up against the wall down in turn three. Manages to keep off it. So Allard just starting to get held up a little bit behind as some of these drivers, the likes of Ryan Barry. He's got to be careful as he works his way around eliminating risk or at least minimizing it as he gets through. Now finds himself on the back of the Auto Super Shops, the three-time New Zealand mini, mini sprint champion, 
of Christian Emanson. Is that car starting to run low on fuel? It certainly looks like it's struggling to pick up throttle coming off turn two and turn four. Let's wait and see. Is Jonathan Allard maybe trying to conserve that race car? Let's wait and see. As this one unfolds, there's still plenty happening throughout the racetrack. The 98 Ryan O'Connor sitting there just into the lap traffic, getting around Battersby now. Max Guilford, Brindle and Darm three wide down the front straightaway. There's plenty going on in the third, fourth and fifth spot as Brindle now gets through on Max Guilford. Jonathan Allard right here in the heat of battle. He's not trying anything too sketchy or trying to take any risks now as he's on the back of Christian Emanson with only four more laps left to run. The starter on the flag. Post letting drivers know where they're running. Just as that happens, Chris Kernahan just gets all out of shape coming out of turn number four. That allows Jonathan Allard to pick up another spot. So the A's tech electrical machine goes back into the lap hand to Jonathan Allard. Allard Al 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 with only two laps left to run. And the Daltons for USA almost completing the first half of the J.A. Russell Marley Spring Royale. Jonathan Allard's going to pick up the white flag with only one more lap left to run for the man out of Chico, California. In fact, he misses the white flag, so he's going to go an extra lap. So make that 26 laps. It's the flag man's got the yellow flag out. We don't know what's going on here. So the yellow is going to come out, and Jonathan Allard takes the yellow flag. So no chicken flag for our leader. So that's the compulsory caution. So still currently under green flag conditions. Jonathan Allard still on the gas. So we're full yellow. Yellow lights, yellow flag. So ladies and gentlemen, as we come to an eventual standstill, Max Guilford already on the infield. We wait for these drivers to get lined up and then we await the inevitable. The hooter, the horn, the foghorn, whatever you want to call it, we await that sound and then the drivers and teams can get out of their race car, work on their race car for the five minutes and then we're back to 25 laps here at Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway. So this man on screen, the Daltons for USA, taking victory here in the initial first 25 laps for the J.A. Russell and Marley Springs Royale. Nick Brown, that was getting thick and heavy with plenty of dicey battles throughout the field, mate. Yeah, was it just me or was uh, 99 um, Christian Hermanson uh, just getting a little argy-bargy with uh, Jonathan Allard there? Just... There was a little exchange coming down as they uh, they went into the 25th lap as Jonathan came up behind him. Then there was a little bit of push and shove. And then when we ran down the cool down lap, uh, there was just a little bit of um, little bit of work down there in turn two. That uh, it seems like, especially as we've ended the first half of the race, that seemed like an unnecessary well, thing to do. I'll tell you something interesting here, Nick, because this is new to all of us, is, is the interesting thing that... I would say Christian Hermanson would not have wanted to go a lap down because I'm not too sure how that's all going to play out once we recommence the 25 laps as far as where these drivers are all going to drop into position. So Jonathan Allard was potentially playing a little bit conservative, but then you've got Herma on the 99M. The last thing he wanted to do was go a lap down. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right there. And it's interesting you point out that uh, you did mention maybe uh, Jonathan uh, was uh, maybe running a little bit low on fuel uh, and just got out of the throttle. But I think he's playing a much more conservative game. He already knew he had the first half of the race sewn up. So uh, all he had to do was bring the car home quite safely, stay out of trouble. And uh, have you noticed the way he was letting the car flow through the rougher parts of the track? Uh, whereas other guys tended to be fighting it just a little bit. Uh, certainly he's got his eyes on the prize for this one. But having said that, uh, let's not take anything away from Ryan O'Connor still running in second spot. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think, as we said, it was uh, the, the conservation game. Uh, you know, a couple of the big players that started inside the top five of uh, Dean, uh, sorry, Dean Cooper and, and Jamie Duffin, they're obviously parked on the infield and not able to sort of lap and, and finish the first 25. So 
that's unfortunate for them because they would have been in the thick of this battle as well. But I think you, you've got to play the mature long game, and that's exactly what we're seeing with here with uh, Jamie McDonald. And interesting to see, probably the the youngest driver at the point end, you'd, you'd probably argue would be Ryan O'Connor in his early 30s, and then you go back to probably the next youngest driver further back than that would be the likes of uh, Connor Engie running in around that 10th spot. So um, very interesting. But Graham Standring, you're down on the infield. Man on the spot, what's going on? OK, what happens now is the crews are allowed to come out to the cars and they're not allowed to touch the cars. They've all got to be ready. When all the crews are in place and everybody's satisfied with that, the audience should listen for two hooters, beep beep like that, um, two horns, and then um, the guys can start working on the car, but they're not allowed to touch the cars or go anywhere near the cars until they hear the hooter sound. So they can prepare to get ready for it now, and then once the hooters go, they've got five minutes to do on the cars. As I said before, only five crew guys per car are allowed out on the crew, out on the track to do the work, so that this will be either They'll be now assessing this, the condition of the tyres and also um, whether they need to make any changes. But also, to throw into the mix the fact that the um, graders are out there at the moment trying to rectify a bit of the track around there between two and three and four. So factor that into the situation and we've got quite a complex thing. The question is, do we change tyres or do, don't we change tyres? I think most people will go for a new set of tyres. Five minutes starts from now. The next hooter will be in four minutes. At that stage, the driver should be getting back into the cars and um, it goes from there. So we're just gonna take some cameras over and watch some camera work working on some of the cars. So uh, plenty of different strategies going on here. So uh, there we see, so Ryan O'Connor just Quick a question. gauge of his helmet. Yeah, go Quick for it. Quick question for you, Al. I mean, uh, as we see uh, Ryan, Ryan O'Connor taking the helmet off, pulled the, uh, the balaclava off, quite relaxed about that. But in a situation like this, would you take your helmet off or would you just get out, stretch your legs and get ready to get back in the car? I mean, to be honest with you, Ryan O'Connor looks like he's really completely at ease with this, doesn't he? <laughs> Rhino's not a real stressed out kind of guy, to be fair. So uh, he's looking cool, calm and collected. As you look at JA at the front, he's getting in there and just taking his time to get ready. But the interesting thing, uh, when that buzzer goes off and the drivers essentially have their last minute, as we heard from Graham, they're still able to keep one team personnel out on the track to actually allow that driver to get buckled in. So to be fair, there's probably no real rush as far as the driver preparation side. It's more the mechanical side. So uh, we see John McCullum just running to the infield there. But Graham Standring, I believe you've got more for us. OK, we've got to check here for the leader at half distance. I don't want to get in the road of their team, but um, that will go to Jonathan Ellard. $500 for leading the race at half distance. Jonathan's now getting his way back into the car. Now, I just want to take point out the um, condition of the track. As you can see, it's still quite rough through the bottom here when you look at um, turns, turns one and two. And um, now we're going now for the promoter's choice. So that hooter now signifies one moment to go. Sponsor's choice of J.A. Russell Limited. And the $250 is going to James Darm. 250 bucks. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Okay. Thanks very much there, Graham. And just while we've got a chance, while you're down there and taking a look through, through those top five drivers, it looked like Allard has, in fact, put on a, a brand new left and right rear. Can you go through maybe the top five and see who's still got uh, the same tyres on versus new ones? That'd be great. OK, James James Darm still got the same, looks to be the same left rear, or it's either a used one or the same one. It's the same left rear. He's sticking with his left rear. Further back in the field, we go to the Brindle team. They have put on two brand new tyres, left rear and right rear. Just as an indicator of price, the tyres are $630 plus GST each. So they're up there in the, in the price range, but that doesn't matter when you're racing for 20000 Yeah, that's exactly right. So there you go. So pretty much the drivers that have got the stock of tyres there are definitely taking the uh, option to, t to slap on some new rubber. And as far as the uh, throughout the field, it looked like the majority of drivers actually were topping up their fuel. So it probably looked like Brindle was the only one that didn't put any extra fuel in there. Uh, Graham. 
No, Brindle did put two, two jugs of fuel in, a jug's um, 20 litres, so he put another 40 litres of fuel on board. Okay. So there we have it. So pretty much the whole field has gone for a couple of new tyres and uh, some extra fuel as well. So plenty going on. And uh, through the field here, we had our picks at the start of the race, Graham. But as far as what you're seeing in terms of the, the track development as well as the, the, the setup characteristics of the cars as things evolve, have you got any picks there of uh, who's maybe looking a little bit racy for the second phase of this race? Um, the only guy that's really, really impressed has been Jonathan Allard, and that's his ability to get through the more difficult parts of the track without issue. He, he's, the lines that he takes, he goes across the ruts, not sliding into them and not upsetting the car. Everybody's having a little bit of trouble coming off turn two, but um, Jonathan seems to have that covered, and I don't know that anybody has the same speed to match him. He is hoping for on his part that he as the mechanic has done a good job of putting it all back together and hope that he can get it done and as so far as the threat the brindle car looks like it's on fire to me to, as in speed wise to go forward and and get it james darms another guy that's impressed the 98 car again is um you know he's he's been there the whole time all through the, the um, dash races everything like that so and a little bit deeper into the field, we'll just look at Jamie McDonald. I mean, he's still in touch with this. A lot of the strategy and the guys that I've spoken to thus far was let's get through the first 25. There's a serious amount of money in this, so we've got to be there at the end of the race. But in the last laps of the um, second 25 session, let's get on with it and try and get to the front. Yeah, so you could say that this almost becomes a, a 25 lap sprint race now, Graham. Now that things have settled down and everyone's got their established uh, starting positions, obviously it'll be a little bit different with being line of stern, taking the single file restart, but now it becomes alive. Yeah, it does. It comes alive now, and um, yeah, the second 25 should be quite spectacular, I would think. You know, I think the, the eyes are on the big prize, not necessarily the half time um, deal. So. There underway again there we go so as we get them fired up just quickly it, it, it seemed like the main change was uh maybe wheel spaces tires and fuel was there any drivers throughout that you saw maybe yes. throwing a different bar or different shock at the race car not throwing different bars at it the bars when we talk about the bars that's a suspension adjustment so if a bar is a bigger bar then it's uh, much more stiff and so that changes the characteristics of the car i never saw anybody doing a bar change but i did see them adding weight to the cars so on one end of the bar there's a long arm on the other end of the bar there's what's called a, a torsion stop and that's where they turn the bolt on the torsion stop to add weight to a particular corner of the car i did see guys crouch down and making changes to the specific car in that area changing weight in each of the corner of the cars and that would be more i would think um, to try and smooth their way through some of the more difficult parts of the track again my, um, Jonathan Allard was driving through them and, and much more sort of better lines and things like that so he probably didn't have that same issue uh, finding an adjustment to make the car work. So there you have it and certainly with uh, some extra track preparation going on we've got a completely different looking racetrack down here at turn three and four so that's also going to change things mate. Yes, it will change things, in particular in 3 and 4, but as I alluded to when we are over there by Jonathan's car, turn 1 is um, quite difficult to get into, and through the bottom of turn, turn 1 and 2 is really quite hard as well, so it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be plain sailing, but um, let's um, see what happens towards the end of the race. There we go, and uh, from where you're sitting downstairs in the booth there, Nick Brown, obviously uh, one of the best seats in the house, probably uh, second to, to where I'm standing right now, but uh, how's, what's your take on things as this thing's prevailed? It's uh, certainly been an action-packed night tonight. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to Nick when he's uh, finished having a conversation off here. So... Uh, We'll get set to go green once again, and it's going to be Jonathan Allard, Ryan O'Connor, James Darm, Dean Brindle, Darm, Jamie McDonald, Levisage, Connor Rangi, Zach Sokol, and Dion Cooper is going to be your top 10. But uh, there's a beautiful piece of kit on screen owned by none other than Graham Standring himself. And uh, I'm not too sure if Graham's still got his comms on, but it'd be good to get a bit of an insight as to uh, what that lovely bit of kit is there, Graham. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a 1963 C2 Corvette Stingray. Um, it was restored by Nick Brown and myself, <laughs> and it was featured on Sky TV just a little while ago. Um, the Sky TV do their show at, at our workshop where Nick and I work from. So um, the winner doesn't get the car. But why? <laughs> No, um, so what we're doing is the winner does a lap in the car afterwards, but the, the cool thing about it is we've decided that the crew chief will drive the car because more often than not the driver gets all the accolades and the crew walks off very happy but not really getting something. So this time the crew chief will drive the, the king himself around um, for one lap or two laps after the race. So hang around for that and salute, salute the king and hopefully I'll get the car back in one piece. <laughs> You're a brave man, Graham. It was once told to me by a uh, very wise man that there's two things you don't lend down, and that's your race car or your uh, pride and joy, and that's the second one's your wife. So uh, there you go. You're lending out your prize position there, mate, but I know you've got a couple up your sleeve to uh, keep in stock in your uh, restoration process, so I you know you've got plenty on your hands there. And I, don't, I don't know how I'd feel about uh, Nick Brown uh, restoring a car. How's he going the tools on, Nick? A super, Nick Brown's a superstar on the tools. Oh, don't We've say that. We've got lights out, so we're about to go green, guys. <laughs> That's exactly right. So the Daltons for USA leads them around turn number three as we get set to turn them loose for the money 25 for the J.R. Russell and Marley Springs Royale. We're all alive. This is when things get exciting. The paying spots are set. J.A. gets into the early lead. Then we go back for third and fourth. The brothers, the Darms, hot at it. They're fighting for it. This is the battle for third and fourth, but now Brimdell's in there as well. Keaton Darm jumps up into the third spot, but Mr. Angrier's brother is not going to let him slip away that easy. Ryan O'Connor slipping back into the clutches of the two lads out of Tokoroa. This is the fight on screen. J.A. has driven away with this one once again. Smooth as anything down at three and four. After the tiller had done its job and compressed the racetrack, but already the pole line starting to get a little bit rutted down on the inside at turn number three. So the drivers will be wanting to move up the racetrack to certainly the smoother part of the track, much where James Darm is currently. So we'll keep an eye on this one as the drivers get into the traffic, but that pole line is still so fast, as we can see from Keaton Darm just navigating around the inside of the racetrack. So Jonathan Allard now onto the back of the first lap cars. This time it is Carl Fenton and the Fenton house move is number 77. The 4 USA is going to have to be careful once again. First car picked off as J.A. doing a great job getting through. This is the battle. The brothers third and fourth. Jonathan Allard now trying to get navigate around the outside of Battersby and Scott Electrical number 27. Being strategic about all these moves, just jumped up the inside there. Took the line away from Battersby. Battersby tries to fight back. But the experience of the man out of Chico, California, as we say, the cream rise until the top. And Jonathan being a class act here tonight at Lucas and Western Spring Speedway. Ryan O'Connor now into the lap traffic. James Darm now the man in third. Running him down. Darm just collects the concrete wall coming out of turn number two. But now Allard on the back of Steve Smith trying to get around the Henderson Valley. Automotive number 76. Playing the strategic the long game here. Tries to get up the inside. Always harder as the drivers get further up through the field as well. The fact that the talent pull starts to get a little bit harder as J -Mac, John, uh, Jamie McDonald goes up and over coming out of Penrite turn number four. So that saves Allard and gets him back out of the lap traffic. But at the same time, allows him to come back into the clutches of the BNT number 98 and the ever-charging James Darm. You can never ride off the two Darm cars, and I tell you what, it's all on. So Lucas Oil, Western Spring Speedway, we never like seeing this sort of event, but ladies and gentlemen, the last time we'll see the 71 Hikoki J.A. Russell Marley driver of Jamie McDonald. So when he gets up and out of the car, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and salute the man himself, Jamie McDonald, in his final season of sprint car racing. 
fair to say, one of the genuine good guys of the sport. So that certainly settles things down a little bit. 16 laps left to run here at the Bull Ring, Lucas Oil, Western Spring Speedway. Good to see Jamie moving around on the inside of that race car. Car doesn't look particularly bad, certainly the front wing looking a little bit worse for wear, but as he gets out of the car, put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for J Mac, Jamie McDonald. So J Mac at that point in time was sitting in around that fifth there, uh, sorry, sort of around the eighth, ninth, tenth spot. So not the way you want to finish the night. to the infield and looks A-OK, -okay. no limps or anything along those likes. And certainly after those, uh, the little bit of track preparation that went on down here, in particular at turns three and four already, starting to see some big clumps of clay in the middle of the turns as well. So uh, the track is gonna start getting thick and heavy with 16 laps left to run. Jonathan Allard was still the fastest man on the racetrack up until that point in time, but Ryan O'Connor, and uh, James Darn was certainly on a charge as well. So just closing up the field, throws this thing wide open once again. So as Jamie's walking to the infield, he can still see us on the big screen. J Mac, congratulations, mate. It's been a great season uh, or great career of sprint car racing, but uh, certainly here at Luke's or Western Spring Spearway, you can hang your helmet up in pride, mate. You've done a fantastic job, certainly done a great job for your sponsors and partners on board, the likes of Haikoki, J.A. Russell and the like. So uh, congratulations to an amazing career of sprint car racing. And uh, I'm sure not the way that Jamie would have liked to have finished here at the sprint. So as we get the Haikoki, J.A. Russell machine pulled to the infield, we'll be set to go green, as I say, for another 16 laps here at Luxor Western Spring Speedway. As we get the drivers back, line stern to take the restart of this one. Yeah, I'm just watching the cars go around here and it's been pointed out to me that Matthew Levisage in car 78 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th place, unfortunately, is a flat left rear tyre. So he might be able to keep going for just a short time and on the inside. If the tyre's flat on the inside, you're okay. It doesn't look like it's dead flat, but it is pretty close. Car 78, the Toyco car of Matthew Levisage is a flat left rear. Yeah, I was about to say that when we were doing some of those chats earlier on that, uh, that sort of competition caution on the infield Graham that obviously there's a lot of variables that it comes to that theory if it ain't broke don't try and fix it and uh, potentially come and unfold it there for Matthew Levisage so the lights are out once again and we get set to turn them loose 16 laps here on the restart of this one J.A. Jonathan Allard and the Daltons for USA with full control so maybe a, uh, a bleeder on the inside of the left rear on Levisage's car maybe letting that left rear down maybe a puncture but regardless, not looking good for the man out of Canterbury as his teammate, essentially, or the fellow South Islander, and Connie Rangi gets it to the inside of him. But Jonathan Allard streaks away once again with full control here. Darm on the charge in the high flank, 6M now moves up into the second spot. Navigated his way through on Ryan O'Connor. So move the Tokara man up into the second spot. He'll be looking to chase down Jonathan Allard, currently in the lead. Brindle and Keenan Darn almost there getting together, coming out of turn number four. But clearing through, Jonathan Allard once again with full control. Ryan O'Connor not wanting to let James Darn get away. He's trying to get back up the inside. Keenan Darn in a heated battle with Dean Brindle. All kinds of wheel stands trying to jump through the rough stuff down on the inside. Certainly still plenty of moisture and drive down there on the pole line. The 
last place you want to be is in the middle of the racetrack. That's certainly where it's taken rubber and it seems to be the slower part of the racetrack. But as we say that, Ryan O'Connor trying to get up there but just can't get the drive off the turn. Looks fast in but slow coming out. So he's going to have to try and make some work. Keep done, just hanging on to that pole line. And already now starting to get a little bit closer to Ryan O'Connor. So will we see a dam? Maybe two and three. We're about to find out. But Jonathan Allard still leading this one with 10 laps left to run. And the J.A. Russell and Marley Springs Royale here at Lucas Oil Western Springs Speedway. Once again, J.A. onto the back of the 27. Scott Electrical Machine of Battersby. Nine laps left to run. J.A. gets right up against the concrete and almost takes himself out of this one. He's got to be so careful. But at the same time, he's got James Darm hunting him down. What are we going to see as this one prevails? James Darm right up against the concrete wall. Down at turn one and two. Allard with his hands full now. It's closer in the lap track because Darm is right up against the concrete wall just when I think he's going to take himself out of it. He's literally brushing the side of that race car right up against the wall. And Ryan O'Connor trying to get in there with a shot. But Jonathan Allard gets her on another lap car. That's Steve Smith. Now sets his eyes onto the back of the Aztec electrical burger automotive machine of Chris Kernahan. Kernahan knows that he's there and lets the man out of the United States through. Here we are with only five more laps to run for Jonathan Allard. James Darm right in the thick of battle, right up against the wall once again. Trying to make a whole lane of his own. Going the long way round, but is it going to be too little, too late? Four laps left to run for Jonathan Allard. Now J.A. sets his eyes onto the back of HLR Racing's Christian Hermanson. With a small gap between himself and James Darm. As we say, the challenge trying to get through the lap traffic as you get further forward. The drivers get better and better, but there's all sorts going on further up with Leveson just left rear getting all out of shape. And that's going to potentially get in the way of J.A. as he tries to get around the outside. Both him, Ensign and Ella just getting by the outside of the 78 Toyko man. But the white flag coming out next time by for our leader. Jonathan Ella, can he bring home the J.A. Russell and Marley Springs Royale? Only two corners left to run for the man out of Chico, California. Here he comes through turns three and four for the final time. The Dalton's for USA of Jonathan Allard takes the Springs Royale. Second position goes to James Duff. Third going to Ryan O'Connor. But the man on screen, your J.A. Russell and Marley Springs Royal champion, the man out of Chico, California, Jonathan Allard. Absolute class act here tonight at Luke's or Western Spring Speedway. Fastest man, undeniable, all night here at the Springs. Ladies and gentlemen, as he drives by the Dalton's for USA, Jonathan Allard takes victory here for the final night at Luke's or Western Spring Speedway. There it is. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. He salutes you. Give him a round of applause. Jonathan Allard, you're winning here tonight. What a great performance from Jonathan Allard. A man who uh, denied the uh, 1NZ on the back of the car, but here at Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway, on the nights of the uh, J.A. Russell Marley Springs Royal 50 lap sprint car classic. What a brilliant race. As he steps out of the car, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to get up on the back and do the wing dance. Give him a huge round of applause. He really is sprint car royalty, ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Allard. That's one happy man. And a massive thanks to Dalton's.
bringing out Peter Murphy and preparing a great track for a great race tonight at Western Springs Speedway. Well, Jonathan, I, like I said, this might have been the end of that horrible process, but certainly, wow, you were the best guy by a long way, manipulating your way around all the um, ruts, all the different parts of the track. Just well done, a perfect drive. Well, I've had plenty of damn time to think about it, I'll tell you that. I, uh, I've been making a lot of mistakes lately, and it just shows you all the hard work that we put into this thing. And uh, without all the guys from Dalton's, uh, we wouldn't be here. Each and every employee puts in their effort. So I couldn't let them down. I wanted to work as hard as I could. And we were up till all hours of the night. Uh, getting all the tires ready and all the possibilities, but uh, shows you what a damn fast hot rod we got. Thank you, everybody that's part of Godalton's. I want to thank GTR Developments, Carbon Zero, Havard. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, I would like to thank my beautiful wife for putting up with me. Um, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you people for coming out. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys. Western Springs wouldn't be here without you guys, so thank you very much. Jonathan, uh, as, a, as a group of people and, and all the other races, we thank you too for what you've put into the sprint car racing in New Zealand. And, and this is absolutely fantastic. I, I'm very pleased for you and your crew, absolutely. Well, it just shows you when John and the Springs Promotions puts up the money, uh, we're going to be here. So uh, thank you to them, and, and uh, we really appreciate the effort from the promotion to be able to get this. And I'd like to thank Marley and uh, Jay Russell for coming aboard and making this thing possible. Uh, they're great sponsors of the sport, and uh, without them, again, we wouldn't be here. Perfect. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, and don't leave, just he's going to be doing a lap around the track. Get right by the fence, and we're going about to crown the king. I heard I know whose Corvette that is. Do I get to drive it? No, your crew chief does, actually. <laughs> so you're going to be just sitting there looking flash. Second? Yes, sir. Okay, James, we'll get you right by the car here, right by the hydraulic car. James Darm, what a drive, man. You were like each of the after the restarts, certainly got it going there. So good job. Yeah, it was a real good um, Oh. Yeah, big balls up there. I love it like that, eh? Uh, running the fence down, so that was real good. I'd um, just like to thank all the crew that bust their butts every time we come out here to you know, try and put the, the, the best equipment for me and my brother. So thanks to all the crowd for coming out. What a barnstormer. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely huge. After 25 laps, you thought you are in with a chance for sure? I thought we looked pretty good there. We didn't do a hell of a lot on, down there uh, in, in the break, but uh, just some more gas and... Uh, few tweaks and I saw that I saw you you're one of the only guys adjusting bars and things like that so um, yeah just those adjustments helped quite a bit yeah you still had to be quite free if you were right up on the fence so um, uh, yeah I love it like that it was good fun looked like you loved it like that because the wall was the only thing holding in here at times <laughs> yeah the three and four I tried to flatten that a couple of times but nah she's all good just like to thank um, Hydrolink and Valvoline Scania uh, Kiwi Tires and um, yeah everyone that puts in for this year. All awesome. Uh, Z Energy too. Yeah. James Dunn, bridesmaid for the King of the Springs. <laughs> good the good Springs. Queen of the Springs. That'll do you, yeah. Okay, over to third place now. Absolutely. Ryan O'Connor. Man, ran in second for so long there. After 25 laps, what did you think? Oh, I mean, like, I was pretty relaxed at that 25 lap point because I um, knew I had uh, sort of car was in a good place, so uh, yeah, it was enjoyable conserving the car and then having a go on that second one. Unfortunately, that last restart just didn't quite get the start I needed, but great fun either way. Okay, well, congratulations, third place. Well done. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers for coming out. Thanks for all these sponsors. Awesome. All righty, folks. As we put put the captain's the uh, the king's crown on, there he is, <laughs> getting uh, ready to come for his lap of honour in the uh, bright red Corvette around Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway. Presenting him, ladies and gentlemen, with the crown at the Springs Royal 50-lap Sprint Car Classic and the purple robes of royalty. Ladies and gentlemen, arise. Sir Jonathan Allard, join in your steed and salute the, the people who came to the Springs, your servants. 
tonight here at Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway, sitting up at the back as he makes his way around, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a huge round of applause. The $20,000 check. And a big thanks to J.A. Russell and Marley for the Springs Royal 50 Lap Sprint Car Classic. Thanks to Midas for the uh, Midget GP and for Wash World for the uh, Kiwi Kids. And thank you for turning up, ladies and gentlemen, as he makes his way around. Let's get ready for next season at Western Springs. We would love to do this all again. What a great race that was. We've only just got started with more big, great racing to come. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure to get the races in this season. Thank you so much for turning up. Thank you so much to all the sponsors for helping us put on a great racing event. And above all, thanks to all the drivers and crews to prepare the cars, to bring them out week in, week out. Finish or not finish, they put on the greatest show on dirt. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time here at Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway.